Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines for another edition of the Thrift Store Rundown, Bleeding Hollywood Home on a Budget. With several NASCAR races across actual motor speedways around the country being postponed or cancelled outright due to the coronavirus, motorsport fans are taking to a website called iRacing.com, where for a registration fee, monthly or yearly, which can be pretty steep or dirt cheap depending on how long they want to do it, they can put their pedal to the metal against over 140,000 sim racers from around the world, including several NASCAR champions. That sounds pretty spectacular, coming from somebody who is a big fan of open world simulation games, primarily in the racing genre, and it's definitely worth the price of registration. Whether you're looking to take part as a spectator, or are looking to become the next American speed racer, or are just looking to disregard it outright wholesale, and just look up several past Daytona and or Indianapolis 500 races on YouTube, I find it frankly unacceptable to take part in such a high-octane sport without some high-octane grub. Thus, I bring you Mario Tailgate's NASCAR style. Part of the NASCAR library collection from sporting news books purchased for $3.49 and for 50% off. The essential cookbook for NASCAR fans by chef Mario Batali. Now I know what you're thinking. This review is going to suck for two reasons. One, nobody's tailgating right now. You'd be breaking the law if you do, because we're all being ordered to stay home. And two, Mario Batali, as you and I know, is a culinary iconoclast who has yet to stand trial in Boston for battery. And I also lied when I said that the America Farm the Table cookbook review would be the last that you would hear Mario Batali on this channel. That's another one of his cookbooks. Well... I purchased this before I purchased America from the table, and I don't have any other option now other than to review it. I bought it, I gotta review it, it's my obligation to tell you whether or not it's worth your money despite what you may think of Mario, and we actually done a couple of NASCAR related reviews on the channel, so hey, why not one more? I did, however, take careful consideration to only include recipes that involve no active cooking time whatsoever. Because the majority of cooking you're going to be doing with this cookbook, which takes up a good chunk of grilling and barbecue recipes, you're going to be doing all of that on your grill or barbecue. And the ones that involve any stove time, you're going to be doing that inside of your camper, on your camper's stove top. Because this is a tailgating cookbook. And as I said, nobody's really tailgating right now. It's illegal and dangerous. So... You're just going to be seeing mainly potty grub and drinks. We begin with Speedway guacamole. One of those things that people expect at a tailgate, no matter what tailgate. NASCAR, football, whatever. Like getting lost on the way back from a visit to the concession booths. In addition to some delectable looking photographs like this one, you get to see photographs of NASCAR legends and NASCAR lore. You get to learn more about the speedways, NASCAR champions, and NASCAR around the world. We have white bean and artichoke dip. We have smoked salmon dip. You'll have to buy smoked salmon already smoked. You don't need to smoke your old salmon for this. Plus, salsa picante, the ideal appetizer. Set it out on a bowl and put a bag of chips next to it. Everyone knows the drill. For this, we have Cocido Bogotano. This is a classic stew from Bogota, Colombia. Though it has a long list of ingredients, this is apt to prepare at home. It has nothing to do with NASCAR, but if you show up with it at a tailgate, maybe the tail sell more than all the 200 in Mexico City, everyone will be very, very happy. I'm not including this for the sake of including the recipe, I'm including this for the sake of the photograph. Two NASCAR Colombian participants with two NASCAR Colombian hotties right over there, side by side. That picture is making me very, very happy. There's also a recipe for mortadella skewers with dip. I forgot to include that in here. Why don't we find that right now? It should be in here. Found it! Mortadella skewers with horseradish dip. 
Mortadella is to Deli Bologna what Michelangelo's David is to lawn sculpture. It's so cherished in Bologna, Italy that some of my favorite restaurants there have no problem serving a platter of mortadella before the start of an elegant meal. Next up we have Bolotti beans with balsamic vinegar. You'll get rave reviews if you make this simple, rustic appetizer traditionally served in the Emilia Romagna region of Italy. The unique flavor of the balsamic gives the beans a distinctive kick. If you sell out some big bucks for a 25 or 50 year old balsamic, you'll experience one of the great flavors in the world. On the right we have spiked beans. By the way, any recipes that appear side by side that involve some active cooking time are just coincidental. We have creamy coleslaw. And by the way, that also goes for recipes that appear um, top and bottom. A good coleslaw can surface an all-purpose side dish. It goes with barbecue, with sandwiches, with grilled chicken, even with steaks. This is a side dish that you serve cold. No cooking for that. How about mudslide pie? No baking involved. You just put this in the fridge or freezer when you're done. At the moment, it's common for a winning driver to pop open bottles of champagne to celebrate a victory with his crew. But that's only because they haven't yet tasted mudslide pie. One taste of this, and it's back to the old pie in the face as a celebration. And now, for the victory lap, the drinks. Now, I don't really drink much. Alcohol-wise, I don't drink at all, period. But for those that do, allow me to present to you your victory lap. Because nobody likes being soured with spoiled milk or fresh milk all the time when they complete a race. I like to welcome friends to a meal with some kind of interesting and pleasing cocktail. It's not the alcohol that's important. It's the idea that you are sharing a meal together and the drink marks the beginning of that event. When a drink has a surprising flavor, it also ensures that the meal starts out on a happy note, or in this case, finishes on one. Tailgating celebrations include drinks of all kinds. It makes sitting around a campfire and especially your unconditional devotion to your favorite driver that much more fun. But be sure to be attentive to some of these drinks. Their easy golden taste belies their kick. We have seven of these drinks. We have a watermelon, gin and tonic. We have Negroni. We have a raspberry rum punch. We have strawberry lemonade. We have mint juleps. Borrowing a cue from the Kentucky Derby, the annual horse racing extravaganza. Happy hour watermelon. And finally, horchata. A Mexican drink, staple ingredients, Rice and almonds, plus cinnamon. I saw a version for our chapter on Food Versus, uh, that's Seth John's YouTube channel, so I wanted to include that here because Seth John is superior. Richard Childress, President and CEO of Richard Childress Racing, says, I had the chance to meet Mario for the first time at a dinner he prepared during a race weekend at Pocono in 2005. That is Richard Childress right there hanging with Mario. Everything was fabulous, from the entrees to his homemade sausages and desserts. Watching this TV show, Molto Mario, since then has made me appreciate his chef skills even more, and I look forward to the next opportunity to sit at his dinner table. This is an officially licensed NASCAR tailgating cookbook, if that is any consolation to those who just despise Mario but love NASCAR. With its easy recipes and clear, simple instructions, Mario Tailgate's NASCAR style will be the source for tailgating for NASCAR fans around the country. It features regional favorites and classic grilling recipes, on which Mario has put a signature spin. Included are ideas for breakfast, appetizers, main courses, desserts, and drinks, or incorporating ingredients found in almost any supermarket. Written with Mario's usual wit and candor, and punctuated with racing lore, this book will allow the average NASCAR fan to cook great tasty food with ease and have the folks tailgating next to you longing for leftovers. Retail prices, $19.95 US and $24.95 in Canada. I can promise you this, 
At one, the recipes in here are sure to get your engines revving and I make your stomach growling like mine is right now. I don't know if you can hear it, but it hasn't been stopping ever since I started taping this video. Two, this will forever be the last time you will hear Mario Batali on the third store rundown. Period. Because I cannot continue in all good conscience to support the actions of a criminal. Alleged criminal. Presumed innocent until proven guilty. But you know what? He'll be on the fast lane to prison before he knows it. And if not, well then, the criminal justice system is a huge, colossal cock -lock. And number three. Well, for NASCAR fans who are looking for a good tailgating cookbook, you can't really do much worse. I mean, we do have a Fox Sports tailgating cookbook if you want to check that out, but that's mainly for football. NASCAR, football, they're not really the same thing, but tailgating is tailgating, so you can do better, but you really can't do much worse. And it's pretty good. Five out of five? I know, much more than pretty good. I am a big NASCAR fan. I don't really talk about it much, but I love racing, and I have a lot of respect for NASCAR. So therefore, I have a lot of respect for this cookbook. And again, not so much respect for Mario Batali now, in hindsight. No matter what you think of Mario Batali, this book is sort of add some Talladega level talk to your next tailgating event. And believe you me, there will be a next time for tailgating, because as I told you several times, I will tell you again, when all this chaos eventually settles down, we can all go back to living life on the fast lane. I promise you that. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the flip side.